Ray, we were at Sebring here. We were waiting for this little baby to arrive. It looked like she's got got here. Oh, we did. We got here. Not quite as complete as we wanted. We uh, It's part of an ongoing program to work on one of uh, Paul Mather's M squareds. Uh, we did the slots and the end plate, which worked out rather well. We got it down to 19 knots now. But she was a little out of balance, and we wanted to put a bigger motor on there. So we went and got the HKS 700 Turbo. That's the 80 horsepower. That's the 80 horsepower for about two minutes, but then it's 77 horsepower continuous after that to 16,000 feet. So, so that, that's quite a bit of power to have on a little uh, M squared. Uh, it, it, it is. Um, Paul's considering it uh, to use on his two seaters. Uh, I put it on here because this is a very high drag device because we wanted to make it fly really, really slow. And we figure in the power on configuration, we may get this thing down to around 15 knots of stall speed. But we're going to need to get some nose up. And we're going to get to have to have some power behind us to do those kind of that, those kind of float buys uh, for the audience. What kind of weight have you added to this airplane by adding this engine? Uh, we're we're guesstimating at this point. It doesn't have a muffler on, so we lost some. It's not we're going to lost some weight there over the previous 503. But we picked up a little bit of weight for the intercooler, which is up here, and we're going to replace this because this configuration is pretty ugly right now. Um, we picked up a little bit more weight because the fuel system is now, we brought it up to ASTM standard, which means now we got metalized fuel lines and we've also got uh, pumps and filters that we didn't, extra pumps and filter weight that we didn't have before. Uh, and the engine itself, because it's got an oil system in it, even though it's an air-cooled engine, it's still got an oil system, so that it, we picked up a few pounds there. And then the basic weight of the airplane is probably about 25 to 30 pounds heavier than a 582. And I really consider this motor uh, a, a replacement, a better replacement for a 582 if everything works out right. Because you'll get an extra 15 horse, 17 horsepower that's uh, continuous to 16,000 feet. So you don't get that power loss like you do with a regular aspirated engine. And then uh, you, get that, you get the reliability of a four cycle and the fuel consumption of a four cycle. For the information I had, this doesn't use any more than their little 65 uh, horses. Yeah, it's but supposed to be around thir three and a half gallons an hour. It may use a little more on this one because of the high drag configuration, but still, it'll be a, a, a plus up savings at four bucks a gallon <laughs> for a high test right now, going only up. So I, I think I think there's some potential here. If it works out real well, the other ones that are in the field right now have all flown well. They haven't had any issues with them. Uh, it's a matter uh, uh, more of a refinement of the installation for the application you put it in uh, than anything else. And you've done some very neat things with this airplane in order to adapt uh, this engine to it with the, the mounting of some of the accessories to this. Yeah, we looked around at some of the other applications and, and the early ones had, you know, from the factory when you're working with prototypes, this is, a, this is one of the first production motors. Okay, but even the production motors um, there isn't a lot of knowledge out there as far as how long to make the wire runs, for example. And when you have a small engine that has to capture uh, more horsepower for you, you're going to have a computer and you're going to have some feedback loops for that computer so that it continues to meter the fuel properly and the air system properly. So that means you know you have to go ahead and, 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 and try to work out a system. And this came out very, very nice and tight for us. We put these end plate, these side plates on the on our on our, our, our single seat breeze, and so our map sensors and our computers and all our electronics is buried on the left side here of the, of the aircraft, and on the right side we have our pumps and our fuel and filters. They're in here, so they're they're nice and tucked away and out of the airstream, uh, pretty much. But you can still get to them and pre-flight them in one of these very basic airplanes. Um, I, I need to show you one other thing while you're here. Can you cut away for a second? We're back. Uh, what have you got here? Well, one of the things I, I, I like to do is I kind of tinker a bit. And I, I go between the very simple and the, and, and, and the complex. And I guess one of the things that people think that these airplanes are too simple to be, to be now, to be the kind of airplanes you want to fly now. Well, I've, I've kind of taken a mixed bag of... Uh, high lift devices on this thing, a more complicated, more powerful engine, and, and, and my third part of this triad is I've tried to build the smallest glass cockpit that's available. It's got two Dynons built into it, uh, engine management system and all your aviation data. I've got a Garmin 296 built into a gizmo, and then I pull a, f a full uh, ICOM uh, panel mount radio into it. And it even has a uh, angle of attack indicator built into the probe, and it uses a Cessna static port. So, it's this little, we designed, I designed the little pod and made the model up and we did it and we're going to hang it in the front just like we did one on the previous one. 
and uh, it's, it's a little a little more weighty, but we can do VNAV. <laughs> so so when when this airplane's flying, it'll be a very nice mixture of the simple and and uh, and the modern. And I think that'll I think that'll people look at these airplanes and they'll go, you know, you can do an awful lot with these things and still stay within a budget. You know, you can still fly, and if you want to be a geek. And, and very technically oriented, you can play with these airplanes and do that. And, and, and you can have fun doing it. And you can have fun doing it. So you, you can run the full spectrum with this airplane, which you can't do with most of the other. So, so we're, we're really looking forward. This thing should come together over the summer. And uh, the goal now is to get this thing ripping up there and fly it up to Oshkosh. You know, and, and make a good show of it for everybody up there. Uh, I think we're going to have Paul post some of the photographs on uh, the M Squared uh, aircraft uh, site. So it's msquaredaircraft.com. And he should be posting some photos up there uh, uh, after the show here. And you'll start to get to see, follow along a little bit with us and see, see what we're doing. Thank you very much for your time. No, no problem. Anytime, Dave.